Welcome to the DL. I am your host, Tyler Robertson, the CEO and founder of Diesel Laptops. And if you're watching on the video portion today, you'll notice we're not in our studio. We're actually in Dallas, Texas at HDAW. So we're gonna be doing a couple episodes from here. And I wanna say, I, I it's, it felt really weird. I was like inviting some people, calling people, texting people, saying, hey, would you like to come to my hotel room? I got a camera crew and, you know, inviting some random dudes to your hotel room could get weird, but it, but this is not going to get weird. So I'm going to say, Vince with IPD, welcome to the DL from HDAW. Hey, thank you, Tyler. Yes, if you, um, those noises in the background are probably cows, if you hear anything, <laughs> with some long horn running around. It's... Yeah. So, you know, let's just let's just do this first. Like, who who is IPD? So I'm going to be honest. I was on the floor yesterday. I'm talking to different people. I, I would say about a third of the time the people I talked to knew who IPD was, two thirds of the time they didn't. Um, but I, I think it's kind of common understood. There's vendors, there's vendors I was walking around with like, who are those guys and why do they got a 40 foot booth? But th those, those companies are here. So who is IPD? What, what do you guys do? Okay, so IPD is a company that's been around since 1955. Um, so, you know, n newcomers on the scene. Yeah. Um, and we've been making engine parts for um, diesel engines for, you know, big engines uh, that whole time. Um, you know, pistons, liners, rings, uh, you know, head gaskets. Um, we, we focus on the hard parts. Um, it's in our DNA. It's what we do. We, you know, we, we dabble in some of the smaller engines, you know, like a six liter engine. But for the most part, it's the 15 liter um, and up stuff. Right? So it's truck and off it's highway is a big truck, part of your business. Too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Trucks, the smallest stuff we do. Right. Yeah. And most of the stuff we do is bigger. It's pistons that, you know, um, are, you know, so big that, you know, you, you, you got to use a forklift to move them. So I, I gotta, how, how does a company even get started to say, Hey, I'm going to go, I'm going to go build big aftermarket engine parts. Like, is there, is there you know, a founding it, story here? Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's one of those, it's, it's before my time, obviously, yeah. but it's one of those companies that started in a, in a, you know, in a woodshed. Um, and, uh, Bob Rasmussen and Walter Storm many years ago founded the company, um, making, uh, you know, small parts for a customer who, who needed something. Um, and you know, you start with one part and then you just start to make additional parts. Um, and you know, when you start to put together the, the expertise around, okay, how do I make something like, you know, a piston or a liner? Um, and then you start to put, okay, how do I ship it? Yeah. Um, and, and all those things, you know, you, you learn those things as you do them. I mean, look, you, you know this from starting a company. It's yeah. like, um, but what's amazing is how many parts companies I talk to that have like a very similar story. Someone years ago was like, I need a widget for my truck and nobody makes it yeah. or the manufacturer stopped making it. So I'm going to yeah. make it. And then they sell it to a buddy and a friend and here they are years later. And I, IPD is not like a, just a North American company. That's the interesting thing about you guys. It's, it's really a worldwide thing where you guys are. What, where else do you guys play these, in, put these engines in. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we're, it's the U S or I'll say, um, how about, you know, North America and U S and Canada is, is only, you know, a little more than 50% of our, of our, um, market. Uh, the rest they go, they go all over the world. Uh, we've got locations in, in Australia, in, uh, in Europe and Denmark. Um, we have, uh, a good, like sales guys located in, in places like, um, Poland and Russia, um, and you know, the middle East. Um, and it just goes on. I mean, it's, Every continent uh, other than Antarctica, we've got uh, boots on the ground. Yeah, I mean, that's just crazy, right? Like people look at diesel engines and they're really, they're really the same no matter what continent they're on at the end yeah. of the day. <clears throat> yeah, they're the same. And, and you know, it's um, the, the people who make them, you know, the, the OEs, right? You know, Caterpillar, you know, Cummins, uh, whoever, Detroit, they, they, you know, leverage that global, you know, economy, right? That they, they make it, they design an engine in one, one place and then they sell them everywhere. Um, so the aftermarket, the people making parts, replacement parts, which, which are, there, there is a, there's an important distinction between making a, um, you know, an aftermarket part, a part that'll fit versus say making a replacement part. Um, because you're, you know, when you're rebuilding an engine that's been rebuilt three, four or five, seven times, um, the part that goes into that engine might not be the same part that, or, or it might not be the same part that came down the assembly line when that engine was new. Yeah. I got to imagine when things are new, things are tight and they're, everything's it, machined to fit inside each other, but. Things wear down after a hundred thousand, yes. a million miles, two million miles, a thousand hours, you know, whatever, whatever yeah. metric that's being used. Yeah. And when you start doing things like, um, you know, uh, taking, you know, uh, 10 thousandths off a head, um, suddenly gear lash starts to become an issue. Things that, you know, wasn't an issue when you put the, the engine together new um, are now, uh, you know, it's now an issue. 
So how difficult has it been, you know, second from the repair side, right? So in yeah. 04, we added, we added the EGR system, and then we added DPS systems, then we added SCR systems, and it just basically goes on and on. Has that added a lot of complexity to aftermarket companies such as yourself having to kind of keep up with new engine redesigns and these things that are happening inside engines? Yeah, yeah, for sure, on, on, particularly on the on, on highway, right? So in the um, in the off highway world, there's still a lot of engines that you know run like they did in you know 1992. Okay, so you, <laughs> people keep rebuilding them. I mean, you'd be surprised that um, there's still those old two stroke uh, Detroit's that are around, and, and people just you know keep keep running those things, um, but. Uh, from a you know after treatment, um, uh, it's, it's really it's it's more than the just the the way the engine runs. It's the electronics around yeah. the engine, and you go from a you know a little pump line nozzle you know diesel system with a with a mechanical governor, and suddenly now you have a, an ECU. You've got an electronic controller on it. It's just a different um, it's a different ball game. Yeah, and I didn't understand because I worked at dealerships forever, so I always saw the new stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And dealerships typically don't get the old stuff. And then I had a chance to go up to the Yukon to see on the scene of Gold Rush. And I can tell you, they had nothing new up there. <laughs> and they were rebuilding old Detroits and cats. Like if they could find a cat engine in a truck, like it was like literally that was the thing everybody wanted up there because they could just rebuild the things forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I totally get it. So I guess let's kind of talk about the future. Like we yeah. talked about the past a little bit. Yep. Um, the interesting thing is, I, I believe you guys launched a new division in your company. So yes. I, I would love yeah. to, you get a new title? I, I, yeah, I, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so um, uh, you know, at, at, at IPD, we're always striving to be um, innovative, right? And do new things and, you know, come out with, uh, you know, steel liners for the ISX. Um, we came out with that a, a few years ago where, um, <clears throat> I don't know if you know the, the, the ISX engine, where it, um, if, you, if you end up uh, throwing a, a piston seizes or the, the things start to wear out, um, you can very easily throw a, a rod through the block. Yep. So we came up with a, a steel liner because we said, hey, you know what, we need a, a liner that will contain uh, a piston coming apart, um, which it did, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, but you know, and, and normally liners are cast iron, yep. right? And so, um, but we made it out of steel to try to innovate. Um, we also have cryo-treated head bolts, right? So CAT C-series engines are notorious for having head gasket issues. Um, and the problem is that the head bolts are just not strong enough. Um, so you take the, you take the same, head bolt and you run it through a cryogenic treatment process and now that head bolt is strong enough and it, and it, it works. It sounds like so. fancy futuristic stuff almost, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, like, no, no, it's, it it's is. Cool. It's, it's cool to hear though, like, hey, there's an OEM made something and you guys are like, man, it, there's a high rate of failure. Yep. We're gonna we're gonna figure out a way to make this thing even better the second, third, fourth time around, which is yeah, which is yeah. great. And look, it sounds cheesy, right? Cause you always say, oh, it starts with the customers, right? But it, it, it always starts, you know, there's a customer involved, right? You don't yeah. just sit there and think, you know, what, what am I gonna do today? No, there's always a customer who said, says to you, hey, I have a problem. And sometimes the customers say, hey, here's you solve it. And other times, you know, you have to figure it out. You have to spend time with your engineers yeah. and your, you know, the guys, the smart guys. Um, but so, so we're, um, a, as the world changes and as engines went from being mechanical to being electronic, um, and then as the, the, uh, the internet became alive uh, a few years ago, um, the ability to um, talk to an engine controller um, went from, you know, nothing, you know, no engine controllers to now having, you know, the ability to, uh, as you well know, um, hook a laptop up to a, um, a machine. Um, so from a, uh, a, a very general perspective, um, IPD um, launched a new, uh, a new business that's called IDS, Industrial Digital Solutions. And um, it's here to, to attack some of that, um, the, the internet, the, what is it called? Industrial internet of things, yeah. right? So we're looking at, okay, how do you take a device and connect it to, you know, telematics, connect it to the internet, connect it to the, to other devices. How do you connect it to your operator? Um, and, uh, how do you do that in a, um, in a meaningful way? And you do that simply. Yeah. And I, you know, I think a lot of people too, but don't really understand like what you were saying about the reason these things are electronic is we needed to control things and things are getting more finely tuned and emission like mm -hmm. things had to go that way and i know people complain about it a lot so like all oh, that damn computer it's that's the problem on the truck all these sensors now why don't they make yep. them like the good old days and yep. you know th those days are long gone and never coming back and it, it's created a lot of complexity i mean that's why my company exists is because yep. things got really complex really quick to fix and people needed diagnostic tools to do that so I'm starting to see in, in your industry, in the aftermarket world, which we're both in the aftermarket world, just in different areas here, you need the ability to know when your products, especially on that vehicle, like 
what's it doing? What's going yeah. on? Like, how do we, how do we stay competitive and make sure we keep making better products and, and all those things? So, uh, why don't you go ahead and talk about, Hey, we, we have a product that we're helping you yeah. guys with. Yeah. So let's talk about that. Yeah. A bit. Okay. So, um, so from that, from that IDS, right. From, from the, the concept of saying, Hey, we're going to do something that's so radically different from our core. We're going to start a new business. Um, and, and that was the point of starting a new business was that it's so different from what we normally do. Um, now, of course, when you do something that's so different, you can either sit there and, and you know, hire a hundred people and, and, and all try to figure out how to do it. Or you can partner with someone who's intelligent and has already done it, which is what we did in this case. We said, hey, <laughs> um, help, help us out with this. Um, and so uh, the, the, the product, it's called TruckRx. And um, it's a, uh, you guys are providing the, the, the back end and the technology, um, you know, very similar to a diesel decoder. Um, where you can hook up into the the J1939, the, the diagnostic port on an iHighway truck, and then talk to the talk to the machine. Um, you know, you pull your phone out in the same way that um, you know you can buy a refrigerator and you can you know uh, ask that refrigerator what temperature it is from your phone, and you can the, the stuff that we can do like you know you know what kind of foods in your refrigerator, yep. right? People have that, right? Um, the future is here, right? We don't have flying cars yet, which I'm really disappointed <laughs> on, but we do have refrigerators that can tell us if we need milk. Um, well, your on highway truck now is trying to tell you things, okay? But if you don't know how to listen to it, then you know you're you're just you know it's gonna it, a light's gonna appear and you're not gonna know what that means. Um, so the you know in, in a in a very simple sense, um, the the Trucker X product is the here to allow an operator to to talk to a machine in a way he couldn't uh, a couple uh, years ago. So you're this 65 year old company making hard machine parts, yep. and all of a sudden, you're someone in your company. I, I, I don't know if it's you or some people in your company were like, "Hey, we we need to we a, need to get some technology yeah. here." Was that yeah, was that a big a transition and a yeah, conversation yeah, yeah. that I gotta imagine that's difficult? You do yes. one thing forever, and now it's we need to do this other thing. How how is that internally inside the company? Well, okay, look. So it it always starts with you know some some idiot, right? You know, and, and I was one of those idiots, and, and there was a few of us who said, "Hey, we want to do something that's that's." Totally different from from what we're used to doing, um, and then uh, you know going to uh, the, the the board, the directors, you know the owners of the companies, and saying, "Hey, we 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 want to you know we have this idea, um, you know, and this is what's going to cost." Yeah, and then they kind of look at you like, "Yeah, if we need a bunch of money sure about that." <laughs> yeah, and you say, "No, no, really, this is this is going to be fun. It's going to be exciting, you know, and and it, and it's the future, yeah. right? You know, you, you um, even something like you know engine parts." Um, there's going to be a, there's a long tail on the internal combustion engine, right? It's demise. You know, pundits are always saying, "Oh yeah, it's going away." And you know, and all the passenger cars are are, are being outlawed. But the on the on the highway truck side, on the commercial side, you know, and just machines that do work, yeah. dozers, they're going to be around in in a very similar state to they are today for you know for as long as I'm alive. Okay. Yeah. Um. So, but at at the same time, um, the way that people interact with them. You know, via via telematics. Look, so every new machine and every new on highway truck that's being sold today has telematics that connect it to uh, their the dealer, right? The OE dealer, yep. and so the OE dealer gets all this information about how that truck is running. Um, he can um, use that that information to go to his um, you know his his customers and say, hey, you know, I can help you make your trucks run better. Um, and so that's that look look that's what we're trying to do, and we're trying to provide the information also not just to you know. So the dealer doesn't get it now. The independent aftermarket can get that information. Yep, and that's something that is going to be um, very powerful in the in the in the coming years. Yeah, and I I didn't realize it was in the data business until about two years ago. <laughs> and I'm like, wait a second, I'm in the business of efficiency and diagnostics. I'm in the business of collecting data. Yeah, and and you're right because people and companies like you, you need to know when your product's installed in a vehicle. Well, how's that vehicle operating? Yeah. And you talked a little bit about predictive, right? I mean, yeah. that's that's you know everything that happens in the world today is reactive, and it sucks yeah. because oh, something's broke, my load can't get hauled. When can the shop fix it? I got to find somebody. Can they find parts? Like all these uncertainties happen, and if you can actually get to predictive, now you can plan for things, and it changes how people can run their business for the better. Yeah, yeah, and and it's uh, you know your there's an expectation that an engine will run for a certain number of hours, certain number of miles, right? When a guy, when a guy rebuilds an engine, um, and being able to prevent, you know, these catastrophic failures, which, you know, look, look, we've all seen the, you know, the, the engine with the, the, uh, rod coming through the block and, you know, you, that, that's, that's bad. Yep. Right. And so, and, and as a company that makes hard parts, um, you know, it happens, right. You know, an engine built by, with your parts sometimes, you know, go, goes boom. 
and you kind of look at, all right, you know, let, let's let's figure out what happened, and you're you're, you're doing all this, um, uh, you know, you're looking at the engine trying to figure out, okay, why did it fail? What happened? Um, but the the ECU has all this information in it about how it was running and 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 knows things before they happen, all right, because it's it's got you know it's got sensors, right? Yep. Um, and so your your ability to take that information and and you know predict things before they happen, predict check engine lights before they come on, uh, understand that you know your fuel injectors are are floating even before it gets to the point where you know the the engine says, hey, I, there's something wrong. Um, it's huge, and and then doing it not just on one vehicle, but now you've got ten vehicles, you got hundred vehicles, you got a thousand vehicles. Um, that's where you can start to to pull information and, and comparing. You know, the, the simplest example I give to people about how do you how do you save fuel fuel economy with one of these devices is that if you have a fleet of trucks and you have um, you know a different driver gets a different truck every day, uh, you can then look and see okay, uh, who which of your drivers has the worst fuel economy, right? Because yeah. one of them's gonna, you know, got a heavy foot, then the other is gonna, gonna shift differently. He's gonna do something weird, um, and he, he may, maybe he needs training. Um, or you're gonna have, hey, across my fleet, um, all of my um, drivers have the same fuel economy, but that one truck gets bad fuel economy, and that's costing me money every single day. Yeah, I mean, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it, right? Yeah. Like that's, I, I could say my business, like it's amazing how many times you find something and we're like. Well, what, what is that measurement? You look at it like, man, that sucks. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and then you go make a little tweak and all of a sudden things are better, right? But you, you, have, to have, you have to have data and you have to have the insights yeah. into those things. So you, you got this new division of the company. Yep. We got Truck RX that we're working on coming yep. out soon. Yep. Like, I, I'm assuming you're going to have more than one product eventually. Yeah, like, yeah, so, you guys have some big ambitions here and some big goals. Yes, yeah, so, so for us, look, there's... Um, in the world of, I'll say, you know, telematics for, um, you know, even you pick on, on highway vehicles, uh, there's the really expensive, complicated OE solutions, especially for when you get to mach the machine side. Um, and then there's um, some of the, the stuff that's sort of uh, like, I'll say telematics light. Okay, so, you know, it, it hooks, it tells you where your vehicle is, and maybe it tells you the fuel economy, maybe it tells you if there's a diagnostic code on it, but it doesn't really give you information on how to repair it or what that means. Um, and uh, it certainly doesn't connect it to a service, a service guy, right? It gives you the data, right? And so if you're an owner operator of a small to mid-sized fleet, um, you're kind of today in the world of, of telematics, you're kind of screwed. You don't really have any good options that, that will tell you um, uh, how, to, how to fix it, um, connect you with a service guy. And so we're trying to build that infrastructure to say, look, um, you know, in, in your small to mid-sized um, fleet, management on, a, on a, you know, a, a diesel engine or a natural gas engine is running down the road. Um, you need to have information that can go to a service guy, multiple different service guys. Um, and you know, look, we're starting with a device that's gonna save you money on a tow, right? You know, one, one uh, dealer diagnostic fee, you, you saved on when you do something like a truck RX. But you know, the, the future is gonna be um, connecting that into the cloud, having multiple different devices, being able to talk to each other. Yeah. Uh, and then the off-highway side of, of the world, which look, that's that's our on highways maybe twenty twenty five percent of our of our business yeah. today. Um, so most of it's on off-highway machines, and, and it even goes to marine. I mean, there's the each of those segments requires a different um, uh, set of technology, and uh, there's regulations around different engines and 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 the, and the way you have to even talk to them. And I don't know if you've ever looked at what um, the equivalent of the FCC is in, you know, in places in Africa, right? <laughs> you know, I but, haven't. Do they have, do they have emission they're, laws they're and things every, like that? Like, every country has their own rules about <laughs> what you can communicate, how you can communicate, yeah. what kind of data, where you can store the data. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, you even just go to Europe and then you find there's GDPR and then yeah. now, you know, Britain moving out of you know, Brexit. Now they have different <laughs> rules. And so you have to, you have to know those. And so each one of those markets is different, but um, there's, um, there's a ton of opportunity because when I've gone and talked to customers and said, you know, IBD customers who've been buying, you know, hard parts for years from us and said, hey, we have this idea and we want to, we want to create this business and do this. They've always said, fantastic. When can I have it? <laughs> yeah. That's why I was saying, so, okay, slow down. You know, we're not, yeah. we're not there yet. Um, uh, we, we need to, to, to develop the technology well, and, and make it happen. It's really good to see a company though, that's been around for 65 years saying, hey, we, we need to understand this stuff and use it for our business. I mean, yeah. and I, I think that's just a growing trend in our industry in general. And I, you know, I know we compete against the OEMs, right? With our tools and the things we provide. I know, I know you guys do as well. So we, I think we look at it the same way. Like, man, they got 
they got all the resources. They can, they have all this stuff. How do uh, we need to keep innovating and keep coming up with new products and services so we can go compete? And I, I think your company's doing a great job as well because I mean, let's face it. You have people that sell overhaul kits. You guys sell overhaul kits, right? And you're creating those differentiators and those value adds that all of a sudden your competitors are be like, oh, what the heck? Like, how do we how do we compete against that? That, that we don't have a company. You know, like you're you're building that wall and that moat around your business, which. Which anyone listening to this that owns a business needs to figure out how do I how do I build that moat? How do I build the wall walls in my business yeah. so people can't can't compete with me? And I now I can charge a higher premium price, and now I can do these other things because of all the values we provide. So very similar business model that you're doing with with this is exactly what we do at Diesel Laptops. Yeah, well, and, and, and look, as you know, it starts with smart people. Yeah, I have some really smart people on my team. In fact, I have an engineer right now who's installing a, a, a or actually has already installed a, a, a beta unit on a machine. Uh, running a uh, diagnostic we're calling it machine RX. It's it's our next. Um, uh, it's it's the it's the expensive, complicated product <laughs> yeah. right? it's yep. versus the simple truck RX product right now. But it's um, uh, yeah, you have to you have to do things that are you know it's outside your comfort zone. It's not it's not what you're used to doing. You know you have to go to the board and say, hey, you know I, I want to do something crazy. Hey, I need um, a bunch of money. <laughs> yes, I need to spend a bunch of money. I can't tell you what we're gonna get for it. Yep, right. exactly. And yeah. and then and then sometimes you you know you gotta you gotta throw it against the wall and see what sticks. Yep. Um, and then you gotta work with other you know people who are similarly sort of innovative and intelligent. And if you if you end up spending your time and and all of your your you know the, you're dealing with the same suppliers, the same allies, the same you know you know buddies the whole time, then yeah you're you're not gonna you're not gonna grow and you're not gonna your business is gonna you know your moat it's no that their moat's drying up and your and your piece of land's getting smaller. Yeah. Um, and no one wants that in their business. Yeah. Well, and I know, you know, we've talked about that. I, I just want to talk about one subject that's on that's on okay. everyone's mind right now. That's just supply chain, parts, parts issues, problems. Yeah, Obviously, I, I don't have any of those problems. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys are perfect. Just, huh? just, yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, how is, is it getting better? I mean, I, I'm on Facebook groups. I'm on LinkedIn. We talk to customers every day. I can't find turbos. I can't find. Oh, there was a, there was a point that people couldn't find overhaul kits for Cummins engines. And I think that's still a problem for some some models. Like, is, is it getting better out there? Is it, uh, is it worse? Like what, 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 I mean, I know so, we're struggling with some things too, but how, how are you yeah, guys doing? So, so, I mean, look, we've had, we've had some, this last year, it's, it's been a weird time to say we had a good year, but we had a good year. We had a lot of people coming to us and saying, Hey, I, I want parts. I want more parts. Um, and, and what, what we've really noticed is that the, the people who are able to plan better and say, okay, I'm going to need a rebuild kit in in you know six weeks or or six months, yeah. um, they're they're the ones who are who are making it happen, and the people who who come to you like with their you know their their hair all well, disheveled and be like I need a I need I need parts today. That's like ninety nine point nine percent of customers, isn't yeah, it? Though well, <laughs> that's exactly what Truck RX is trying to fix. I, I get it, but <laughs> yeah, but but it's it's the the people who are able to plan and know what they're you know, when the maintenance is going to be needed on, on mm. an engine, when an overhaul, because, because a lot of these big machines are, you know, that 20,000 hours, they get rebuilt. And yeah. so then you know, story. it's coming, you, right. you, can, you can put it on a day and, on the calendar. <laughs> yes. And, and so, and, and there's a season for where they, the way they do the work. There's that seasonal aspect of, yep. of rebuilding engines. Um, you know, because it's, you know, it's, you know, your gold, your gold rush town, you're not, they're not running the engines in winter, right? No, they're probably not even rebuilding them because it's too cold. So yep. there's a time where they have to rebuild it and they know when it's coming. Yeah. And so if they're able to say ahead of time, Hey, um, I know that there's this supply chain issue, right? I know there's this crisis that everyone's dealing with, which yeah. you know we're dealing with as well. Um, so I'm going to go and I'm going to ask for my parts, you know, a few weeks ahead of normally when I normally would. Uh, those guys are doing well because they're getting the parts. Yeah. So you know, I remember when COVID happened and people started hoarding toilet paper and then groceries. <laughs> are people hoarding truck parts? Is, is that a, yes, is that a yes. thing that you're seeing too Stocking, now? So so look, some of our our distributors. Um, are you know are rebuilders and some of them are stocking distributors and the stocking distributors are doing better because um, they're even selling to we, we've heard about inter distributor like one oh, guy yeah, sells yeah. another guy and it's just uh, okay guys you know you, you just there's only so much to go around yeah. and trading yeah. um, and the people who were a little bit more from a business perspective it's always nice to um, have that thing where you know I, I utilize cash well right you know I you know yeah. I have no inventory I'm you know I'm just the king of you know the king of the, yeah just in time minimal yeah, inventory exactly. I'm turning my inventory uh, ten times a year yes those guys are in trouble now I'm assuming they are they are absolutely and and, and look I came from a, I came from the OE world right I yeah. worked with you know OE suppliers and, and 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 big companies and yeah it was all about that like the, the guys who were like well I can save a million dollars by you know one dollar off one of these each one of these parts that I yeah. sell. Um, and then I can, you know, keep it off our books by having it, you know, on a, on a supply chain that's really long and it's complicated. Uh, 
those guys are like hating life right now. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's, yeah. And, and, and also it's, it's also insourcing. It's the people who are able to do things themselves. Uh, are also, I think, are doing well right now. Yeah. Have you seen all the oil shortage stuff going on now with engine oils and people not being able to find their brands and, and those I things going on? No, I didn't know about that. I did notice that the price of oil is through the roof. Like a can of oil for your I, car is like, is, you know, or for a truck so is just nuts. I, I've been, you know, again, I'm on a lot of Facebook groups of drivers, truckers, mechanics, technicians. And that's the thing I'm seeing now. People are like, oh, there's no more of my brand oil I had to use. They had to, they didn't have, first it was, well, they don't have it in bulk, but they're doing one gallon jugs. Yep. And then it was, uh, they got no, no, they don't have my brand anymore. So now I'm on brand B. Like I can't yep. get my mobile, I get yeah. whatever off brand or whatever. And now it's like, well, that's out too. <laughs> and people are hoarding. They're like, literally people are like, oh yeah, I bought 50 gallons to keep my garage at home for my next four oil changes. And I'm like, yep, it, hoarding. <laughs> like, hoarding. We're just going through the same cycle over and over and over again. Well, so it's, it's, it's almost comical. Yeah. I mean, there's like tires. Like I had a hard time. I was trying to get a set of Michelin tires and it's like, they've been out for like six months yeah. of, of a particular style and size of tires. And you're like, okay guys, what it, it's, it's gotta clear up eventually oh, because I, I mean, I, 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 to get here, I flew out of the, you know, out of LAX, right. Yeah. And to fly out of LAX, you fly up and then you, you, you turn left and you, um, I was on the, I was on the left side of the plane. So I got to, I got to see the, the port. Like, was there a couple pictures. ships out there waiting? Oh, it's just this stack of <laughs> container ships. It's just as far as I can see. There's just there. Yeah. Um, and so I took a picture for my, my supply chain guy that, to send to him. Ben so Zay. I, I have the <laughs> chief of the port of LA coming on the podcast here in a, in a couple episodes. Good. So Good. I'm, 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 I'm going to hit yeah. him up like, yes. what's wrong with you guys? You know, I, I know it's not their fault. Right. But, but, and there's a lot of reasons. So no, but Hey, it's been, it's been very interesting having you come on here. Um, and I, I think more than anything, I'm, I'm just really humbled and honored to be working with, with IPD. You guys have a great brand name in the marketplace. Uh, we're really excited you guys selected us here as a technology partner on this first product. Uh, I know we're gonna deliver for you guys. And I, I know it's, I know it's step one of like step 100 where both of us want to get to. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but it was almost two years ago to the day that I, I first met IPD in even a more shady mo hotel room than this one, right? We didn't even have a suite. We were just like, hey, come come sit on the bed next to me. And we kind of patted it, you know? And we had a conversation with, with some of the IPD people. And I know even more like Bob Straw even retired in the meantime since yep. that whole thing. So um, it, it's, it's been a journey. Um, and it's actually good to meet you in person after doing so many Zoom sessions. I know. It's almost yeah. weird seeing it's... you in person. I was like, oh. <laughs> Yeah, you're like I I, I. I think you or someone said, "Oh, you have legs." Like, <laughs> no, you have legs. Uh, yes, yeah. I did. Yeah. No, and hey, look, it's the same. Same. It's it's um, uh, we appreciate working with with people who are intelligent and people who are who are uh, motivated and and you know know the technology and and want to do something that's um, outside of you know what you do every day and you know and and make a difference and and help customers out and we we can see that. Or you know, I, look, I can see it in, in you that you, you know, you want to make those customers smile and, and make them happy um, in new ways, not just the same way the last time that they were happy. Yeah. Hey, there's always a better way to do something, right? It just yep. often takes a lot of money and time to go figure out. Nope, either that was a better way or it wasn't. But we yeah. we all get there eventually. So it's it's fun what we do at Diesel Laptop. So if people want to get a hold of you or learn more about IPD, where where do they go? Uh, so for IPD, you go to ipdparts.com. Uh, okay. but for, um, IDS, we have a new website. So IDSRX.com okay. is the website. Um, and you know, you, there's a contact form where if people want more information, they can, they can put a contact form in there and we will, um, keep them in the loop as we develop these products. Well, I'll tell you what, new, new division, new website, new product, new job title. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah. It must feel like almost kind of starting fresh inside your own company. At, at yeah, this well, point. so I haven't, I still have my old job. So it's, it's just, <laughs> the chief technology officer job is just additional, it's just more, more fun. It's, it's, but, but it's, it's fun. And I, and I say that with, with all honesty, it's, it's just the most, uh, it's exciting and it's fun and it puts a smile on my face every day to, to jump into crazy stuff like this. Well, awesome, man. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for meeting with me. I know it's early in the morning here. We were all yep. kind of out late last night. So it's, it's been great to get to know you. Uh, so as we end every episode, it's just not diagnostics. It's diagnostics done right. And check out IPD. Check out IDS, they, the new product, Truck RX. I think it's gonna be a great thing. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Like, subscribe, comment. All those things help us immensely. And we'll catch you on the next episode.